I'd like to um, first pay tribute and thankful to the Lummi Nation to host us here today. I'd like to acknowledge that first and foremost. Um, secondly, I just wanted to say I'm very honored to have been a part of this um, panel. Um, I was really fortunate to take part in the um, <clears throat> Native Water Network that um, Dr. Emanuel was talking about. And I've, I've really come to learn so much just being a part of this group and collaborating and just thinking about all the indigenous um, research and science that's happening throughout the US and really throughout the world. And <clears throat> really bringing, you know, to the, earlier today there was a lot of talk about um, validity of indigenous knowledge and research methods. And the truth is, is that we we all do so much. We understand, you know, without even really knowing it as a child, you know, your 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 shared um, and you're given these stories and you're told these stories throughout. And when you're a child, they're just stories, right? Or they're just songs. But you don't really understand until you truly think about it. But you hold on to them throughout your lifetime. So when I entered graduate school, you know, um, I took that with me. I took it with me on my educational journey. I embraced it. And what came out of it was this concept of, of doing research, doing science from that indigenous perspective, that Diné paradigm that uh, Elisa was talking about earlier today. Um, for me, it came because the need for a solution to water contamination and pollution is at its greatest right now. Also, the need for sustainability is also at its greatest right now. And, and simply because without water, life simply can't sustain itself. So we need water. And thinking about, think about, thinking about this, it was, and really understanding where I came from and all the hardships that my people are, that are going through. So I come from a community called Tuatlakan, um, where the water is sweet. And it's named after um, that, which is Sweetwater, Arizona. And we had a, um, a long history of mining from vanadium to uranium and all the way now to fracking and oil development. So we're just one after another, decade after decade, facing all of the things that impacts, the long-term impacts. And community members are getting sick. And how do I address this? You know, many indigenous students, when they're going to the university, they have a passion. They have a motivation. They have something that's driving them. And usually, it's their community. So for me, that was, the same, that was my motivation. How am I going to help my, my nation? How am I going to help my people? How am I, more importantly, how am I going to help the community that I come from? And with that, I really needed to um, understand where I didn't want to be a typical research scientist. Western research scientists coming into the community, even though I'm from that community, and doing all this research and just taking it with me and not even coming back. So it's important for me to do all of that, to practice the six R's, developing a relationship, taking responsibility for all that you're doing and planning on doing, having respect 
for, for the community, for the knowledge, for the water, for everything. Um, practicing reciprocity. Um, practicing representation for your community, for your university, wherever it is. And then always ensuring that whatever you're doing, the research that you're doing, is relevant to that community. Those are important principles. So when I started the research, I wanted to incorporate this Diné um, paradigm, um, as Elisa was talking about. So, uh, so principles that I learned at a tribal college, at Diné College, I started off there. And there they taught um, the principles of SMBH, which is Mtsakes, thinking, not a planning. Um, ina, implementing, and seat uh, has um, sorry, um, reciprocity. And I just really wanted to embrace that. And I really thought about it. It's the scientific method. It's exactly what those principles teach us, the scientific method. Just from a different, our own perspective, our own Diné perspective. I took those and I tried. So today, I've been, I'm almost done. <laughs> so I'm at the end, but I use those principles and I use my passion, my motivation to address some of those issues of water contamination. Going, being in a mad scientist in the lab, um, bringing in the hazmat team <laughs> and the fire department. I mean, we went through so many different things in my lab and it's, the stories are endless. And it's just a series of different things that happen, but today, I know I'm so close. I'm developing um, a water uh, filter that could find and remove contaminating elements of concern like uranium and arsenic and vanadium from water sources. So that one day when I come home, that when, when one day, which is probably really soon, when the world is at its dire, dire, dire point, when we don't have access to clean water, then I can say, hey, here's my solution, right? <laughs> I have a filter, you know. But more importantly is I could bring that home to the tribe. I could share that with them. And so that we, at least in our community, in our tribal community, will have a starting point to say that we can, we can go from here. We can always develop. I heard this morning that you know, the, this concept of research is secular, right? It continues over and over and over again, just like that concept of the Nest Science, the SMBH. So I really wanted to do so many things, but part of my journey um, to, to get to the where I'm at now was really embracing who I'm from, where I came from, and and using all of those principles and foundational teachings to bring me to where I'm at and to say, not to, not to validate it to the academy, to own it, <laughs> to live it, and to share it. So with future generations, because I have children and I know that in their future, they're gonna need um, indigenous scientists to come. We were, this morning we were asked, um, I think the gentleman right here asked about um, the validity of science and what it brings. I think what indigenous knowledge brings to the world is we have our voice. It brings a voice to everything that pretty much has been hindered for so many years, right? And that we're able to embrace that and welcome it because we've been living all of the things around us for millennia. And there's no other people to say you're right or you're wrong, right? We've been living it, we understand it. And it brings forth our voices 
to the scientific world, which we've always been a part of and been doing for many, many decades and years and thousands of years. <laughs>